Right, I think we're recording now, but I just can't get this pen working, which is going to drive me absolutely batty. So I'm going to get the pen working, so that works. I might have to start it again. Or go to IT and borrow a pen. Hey, okay, great. All right, fantastic. Uh, all right, so let's get rid of that and start with something like this. Same in. All right, okay. So he asked me thought it was. No, it was. It's a question. Jack knows who he is. He just does not like who he is. I'm going to zoom right in and start uh, identifying the important words. What do you reckon that first quote, important words there? Yeah, who I thought I was. Did not know. Could you also say Because of how. So that he couldn't, it's just a pen. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's nice. Yep. So, how to answer the question? So not that he didn't know the answer, but he didn't know how to answer the question. It's almost like he had multiple answers he wanted to say. He just didn't know which one. Yeah, good. we'll get to that in a second. Um, whether it's true that he had multiple answers or he had no answer, we don't really know. In the quote itself, yeah. Does not like. And this is this whole, to what extent. Fantastic. Okay, so next step, let's grab some kind of descriptive phrases around who I thought that I was. Uh, you want to kick us off? Who I thought that I was, what do we mean? Yep. Costumes, personas, um, self perception, self image, set uh, ideal self. True self. The self. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. The ideal self. Actually, we're going to go like this. So the self image and the true self, I think, go hand in hand. Because the way he sees himself, and the way he actually, when he truthfully acknowledges his behaviours, um, they're at odds with his ideal self. And the language used to describe his ideal self is what his own face. I think that's the quote when he's writing out the academic papers. Hmm. I think that's pretty good. Who I thought that I was. Anything else? Uh, did not know how. Did not know. Did not know. So, ideas for did not know. How else do we articulate did not know? Unsure. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, that's a nice one actually. Indecisive, unsure, unclear, murky. How is he decisive though? So he's clear on what he wants to be and who he wants to be, but it's simply everything around him that allows him to not, well, not so much not be that way, but just the way, it, I don't know, he kind of has to comply with his surroundings, such as the other men in his life. Yeah, well, that's true, but he's also. What we think we mean by indecisive is, uh, and what you're saying is, in the moment, he's quite decisive. Like, he's like, I'm going to be a scout. Yeah. Now I'm going to be a hunter. Now I'm going to be 
um, a, a boxer. Now I'm going to be a thief, a master thief. Um, what I think is what we're saying here is that his identity is iterative, shifting. There's indecisive almost conveys this idea of a dissatisfaction. Because he's never really satisfied with who he is, so he feels like he has to change. Like an urgent, ooh, an urgent need to change, and which is related to an existential crisis. Existential generally has um, implications towards the meaning of life. But I like this one as well because it's about him creating meaning within himself. So you could... You know what? Actually, that idea of existential despair... It could be crisis... Crisis, in fact, this moment is a crisis of existentialism because he's being challenged. So it comes to a head. A crisis involves some kind of facing or um, highly tense conflict. Uh, a moment of truth, which is what this moment is. Despair, I think, permeates the whole lot, though. He's very rarely held to account or made to confront his despair. Cool. So a state of eventual despair, and this moment is a moment of crisis. So can you compare this moment with like the world family as they Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's in the, like an inner crisis, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd say that's him confronting his delinquent side, I guess. That's how I know too. Yeah, like he's unable to... He doesn't have the faculties or facilities or power to make amends. I think that's how I said it too. Um, cool. Unclear, murky. Uh, I like the word, just related to that, inarticulate. Because the boy, it's even within this question, you can see it. The boy, the boy does not know. But the author does. Mm, does the author? Okay, so the boy doesn't know. The boy doesn't know, cannot articulate who he is. But the author is quite damning of who he was. So I think you could probably put the argument there that there might be a distinction between the authorial voice and go away and the childhood psyche Especially when you get the interjection. Oh, let's just pop this in. So let's go green evidence, red argument, um, blue language. So uh, destruction of language. Knows who he is. Jack knows who he is. Okay, just read the thorough voice in the child. The, the example here would be that the author comments on one. He's belonging in the army. He says he feels like he came home, like he finally found his place, which is a little bit ironic considering that's a place of institutionalised violence. So he finds his eventual home in a place that's defined by the pinnacle of American violence. Uh, he also comments on his uh, fatherhood. 
where he presents this kind of cautionary, uh, horror-filled um, hesitance about his interactions with his children. Uh, as in the effects of Dwight. Yeah. His speech, speech, speech to children, his manner. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the lasting impact of Dwight. The legacy, I think the word is, legacy is the word used. So we know that the, the author knows who he is. Does the author, here's my question about the essay topic, and uh, you know what, sorry, I'm just going to pop in here. I think, unless I'm wrong, I would say, what does Jack know who he actually? Oh, does Jack know who he is? Yes, who he wants to be. Definitely knows. He definitely knows, or finds actually, because remember he says he he feels like he's writing his own. He definitely finds an articulation of an ideal self. finds that. He doesn't know it at the start, but he's kind of playing around with it. He plays the thief. He plays the cool kid. He plays the costumed, these costumes. And he finds his articulation of the cool, of the ideal self with the forged academic records. That's Scouts. There's a thing where he says he sees himself something. There are certain personas he adopts, and then those ones he can he articulates that he's going to borrow that or take that on to his ideal self. Yeah. So he sees himself with a weapon. There's the scout uniform. Yeah. Something back and reflecting or seeing himself in that. And then there's the forged. He sees himself in the forged. Yep. There's the iteration. So kind of under un, above this, before that forged academic record we have this iteration of costumes or the iterative process of self-creation and a lot of that is to do with violence so or misdemeanors I need to fill in the rest of these but thief what else? Yeah. yeah. Thief, delinquent, scout. Hunter. Where's Hunter? Is that that's before thief, isn't it? Before the master thief? Come on now, pen. Give me now. Hunter, thief, delinquent, scout, blah, 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 blah. But that iterative process, self creation, and then that, I'm oh, sorry, I should have the arrow going the other way, and my. Direct what? The raise is stopped. Oh, good, thanks, Mr. Mouse. You idiot. Yay, technology. Can't even delete it. Delete. Whatever. That way. Okay. Do we have any forgeries after the academic records? Yeah. 
Do we have any costumes? Attempts at the self-creation after the forged academic reports. I don't think so, and I think that's really cool. So, the forged a academic records are his last attempt. And if they are his last attempt, maybe he's happy with it. Oh, good. And now it's just stopped working. This is about self-creation. His wife tends to be like sending in like the application to all the Ivy League kind of universities because he's trying to be something which he can't achieve because he obviously doesn't have the grades for that kind of thing. Yeah, sorry, that's what I mean by the forged academic. And that word doesn't oh, look like yeah. academic, but yeah, those records. Yeah. So yes, definitely. Oh, that's not helping. This. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You know what? I'm just going to type because this wretched thing is failing me. Okay. So, this is last attempt or last costume. Um, does it satisfy him? Or does he just give up? Or does it demarcate? Attention all Athelstan students in 10A2, Mr Wade's mentor group. 10A2, please report to Ms Wilson's office right away. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Does it demarcate the end of adolescence? <laughs> does it demarcate the end of adolescence? Because, like... I'm done trying to do that. I don't need to reinvent myself all the time. I think he is saying this idea that adolescence is a time of self-creation, like we try to be different people for different situations and different social groups, and you know, we're always trying to fit in. So does it, this is like his last attempt, okay, don't need to anymore, done. So therefore, therefore, at this point, he hasn't yet known this articulation of an ideal self at the point of the quote. So it's something we haven't discussed yet is actually the context of the quote. Do you guys remember where it is? Is that when he's talking to the priest? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Plus. Um, what's the priest trying to get him to do? Confess. It's a an, uh, uh, not opportunity. It's an offer. It's a yeah, yes. It is an offer. I mean, there's a better word than offer. Offer conf confession. Reconciliation, repentance, invitation is the word, I think. Okay. So, offer for confession, reconciliation, repentance, confronting the true self. And as the wonderful Mrs. Johnson would say, he finds himself stultified. Um, frozen. Unable to engage. Unable to admit fault. <laughs> I had a great um, little quip with um, some friends on the weekend. We were talking about this text and we were talking about how I think that um, 
I'll probably only say this on the podcast, I, I wouldn't write this in an essay, but basically Toby's a social retard. No, not social, moral. He's a moral retard. <laughs> basically he's, uh, what is it, what's, because he's, it's Rosemary's fault, because no one holds him to account. No one uh, facilitates the, especially the most significant figures in his life, actually shield him from confronting his behaviours. They apologise for him and enable his, um, his avoidance of, of accountability. So if you have no accountability for your moral behaviours, then you have no reason to develop a moral or the, the morality, the moral side of the personality. So that was my justification for the fact that he's morally retarded. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> I probably would. I wouldn't write that in. Retarded has different connotations, and I probably shouldn't. Say. I meant it in the, the legitimate se- like the sense of the word. So, to, a retard is someone who has um, is delayed. So it's not like they're broken or bad. <laughs> morally bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're just. <laughs> Um, yeah, they've, they've just stopped. Like, their development has stopped. Underdeveloped is probably the kind of way to say it. You might say that he has an underdeveloped conscience. I'd say at this point, he, he knows. I think he, he understands the gravity of his faults at this point. Specifically, if we're going to find the evidence, it's at the Welsh's. And the description... And you, and you know what's interesting about this description? The description of the Welsh farm and the Welsh's condition... I should spell that correctly. I'm going to spell that correctly. The description of the Welsh's condition, which is incredibly emblematic, which is emblematic of of America's most destitute and socially disadvantaged. Um, entails that the boy understood fully, actually in that moment more than anything, actually fully comes to understand the horrors that his behaviour has inflicted on the vulnerable. I'd probably say at this point... I'd say at this point, he actually, um, the reason he doesn't apologise, and I'd need to look back at that, that part, the reason he doesn't apologise is he feels completely unable to fix it. He can't, possibly. There is no possible way for him to compensate for the harm that he has caused. can't reconcile, can't um, pay them back. Because what he's done is obviously, the, the, it's a horror. It's not a, well, I just pinched stuff for you and I can work to pay it off. It's not about money. It's not about finances. It's about um, inflicting harm upon someone's human rights. It's making them feel afraid. The stealing of the gasoline. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Whereas, if it was a middle class family, they would have just been, oh, well, he stole the gasoline and, you know, you'll have to pay it back. But for those people that they're building fences because they feel threatened. They feel threatened even though they're in this destitute place and they can't afford to build, fence, build fences. 
They can't, can hardly afford food, but then they feel like they have to build a fence to keep out people like Toby. Um, yeah, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. So if you, he gets it. He gets it at that point. So at the time that Father Carl confronts him, I think he understands it. He just understands the gravity of it, but he feels like he's incapable of confronting it. Okay, so does he know who he is? He understands some parts of who he is. Ah, oh, my pen's back. Winning. Sorry, I'll wrap up soon. Yeah. Do you notice how long we've spent thinking about the topic? It gets easier the more you do it. Um, okay, contention. So then, kind of, we're pulling all this together. Obviously, our contention needs to involve the quote itself. Um, it needs to involve this idea that he... Uh, Jack knows who he is, right? So we need to articulate the fact that he knows some things about himself. So what does he what does he know about himself? He knows who he wants to be. In fact, he has an increasingly lucid understanding of who he wants to be, right? So it's not a stagnant thing, it's not a stationary thing, it's not even a momentary thing, it is a, it's an escalation of understanding. It's a crescendo of understanding of who he wants to be. And at each point, he also understands that he lacks... the ability or the capacity oh you're being a turd again I'm going to try and fix this capacity to be that ideal self he never becomes a straight A student ever even the adult wolf never becomes a straight-A student. Maybe, you know, we don't know. He might not. Actually, I don't know. I need to know the history. But it's irrelevant because it's not the text. We never see him become the straight-A student. So even when he articulates that ideal self, he never becomes it. And so he's constantly dissatisfied. He exists in a state of constant dissatisfaction. With the self. Okay, have we got enough there for our contention? He does not like who he is. Have we answered whether he knows who he is? Have we answered whether he likes who he is? Yep. I think that's pretty good. There's our contention. It's not bad. So, topic sentences. We need to, uh, obviously, through this discussion, we've figured out that we need to convey the purpose of the costumes. Oh, sorry. Welcome. You want to join in? Oh, right. Yes, I'll head out in a sec. We're going to say the purpose of the costumes, um, so that iteration of self-creation. The pinnacle of self-creation, or the pinnacle of his ideal self. Yeah. We need to be able to articulate his dissatisfaction with his current behaviours. That could actually go before the last two.
And you might want to put in the idea that he feels feels as though he lacks the opportunity or lacks the facilities to be able to become that ideal self through many different reasons, through his family situation, through um, economic, um, what is the word, incongruity or, was it, what's that word where it's not proportion, disproportional, yeah, it's not exactly, yeah, right, so, yes, okay, Unable, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's about social imbalance. Social imbalances. Norms, etc., etc. Anything else? Obviously, we need evidence from that point. I think that's pretty good.